Hey, everybody. Welcome to MVP Gaming Podcast, episode number four. This is Grim's Forge Gaming at Grim's Forge on YouTube. And we're here with the owner of MPV, MVP Gaming, Jason. Jason, how you doing? Hey, what's up, TJ? I'm doing awesome. Okay. Is uh, Last week, here we're uh, at the end of December, at the beginning of January, and it got up to 70 degrees here in the Midwest. Like... Um, What's going on with the weather down there? <laughs> What's... Well, you know, when it's winter time, I like to wear red leather pants, and I had to take those suckers off and wear shorts. It was so warm. You should probably tell the story behind the red leather pants. <laughs> you, um, why don't you tell us why you were wearing red leather pants? <laughs> well, for those who listened to the last episode, I dressed up like Santa Claus um, for some children. And the outfit had fake leather pants that were bright red. You know, it's Santa Claus. So I sent Grim the picture of myself wearing this outfit. And his first reply was, you going clubbing or something with those hot red leather pants? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And he did, right? You went clubbing with that outfit. Oh, abso afterwards. absolutely. I did. Absolutely. I did. Yeah. So I think that same day that you were doing that, I was actually delivering food uh, for our church, we I was delivering frozen meals uh, for our church, and I, I had like 400 meals. And so the lead pastor and I were just going around with my SUV, and then we were taking them to shelters in different locations, uh, different families and stuff. So um, it was awesome. cool. Yeah, we're out there making things happen. So um, Yeah, giving, giving back at Christmas time is important. Yeah, I think so. It really kind of fills the heart. So today we're with Maximosis99, and Maximosis is a Twitch streamer, uh, plays Elder Scrolls Online, one of the best uh, PvPers I've run into in a long time. How you doing, Max? I'm doing pretty good. I'm a little tired, but, you know, that's just kind of how the day goes. Made the, take a nap. But yeah. It's... Hey, you should take a nap. Like, uh, Jason and I are old dudes, and we take naps all the time, so you could be one of us. <laughs> one of us, one of us. I take naps like every hour, 10 minutes on the hour. I just, I can't get through the day because I don't drink coffee. So it's all about the naps. Okay. That is, that is true. I've been, ever since I've grown up, I've always taken naps at some point in the day. Like when I was a little kid, I was never a hustle or a fuss to get to take a nap. If anything, I did it before they even asked. It's just how I grew up. Do you still have your old blanket from when you were a child and you took naps? The weird thing is, is, I've never had a blanket, one of them blankets. I've never really been... It was just a blanket, in my opinion. It wasn't anything special. It was just a blanket. Like a blankie, like Linus from Peanuts? <laughs> no, I never never had one. That's no. probably... Peanuts references are probably too old for Max, too. Ooh, I, that's right, yeah. Well, that, hey, I take naps. I'm old. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Max is getting tired because he is out there killing a bunch of people in ESO. And that wears you out. And when you're running from the Zergs, killing the Zergs and killing people, he's out there fishing for fights. And yeah. uh, um, I messaged Max. Jason and I were talking about, you know, hey, what t what content creators could we get on this on the channel, on the podcast and talk to? And I thought Max would be a good one because uh, we were just talking about this off air. But his engagement, like if you go to his Twitch, Max, what's your uh, Twitch handle? It is Nuff underscore XD. Okay, so Nuff, N-U-F, right? Underscore yep. XD? Yep. Yeah, so you can check him out. And what days are you streaming on Twitch currently? I usually try to stream uh, every day, but there are some weeks where I'm off a week because I have to head to my mom's place. But otherwise, every single day, and there will hopefully be something posted every other day. Yeah. See, That's so awesome. That's what I noticed, Jason, was that his cadence uh, or his uh, frequency, I guess, the amount of times that he was posting, he was posting pretty regularly and he's out there like just doing work. And um, so there's that. And then if you ever jump in, I I'd like everybody to actually go and check him out on Twitch. Um, but if you ever jump in, he did a really good job with engaging with his uh, viewers. You know, if they post hello or how's it going today or whatever. He wasn't one of the people that are streaming and they're just focused in on the fights. And he's a high level um, fighter. Like <laughs> he's out there killing groups, like I said, and, and 
and winning those one v ones and outnumbered fights, but he always took the time to look over and read chat and jump in. And so that was one of the first things that I noticed. And that's kind of a telltale sign for me that somebody that's going to do well, very uh, Nolan Kirkoff like if uh, the viewers know who Nolan Kirkoff is, which a lot of them do because they were on the, th he was on the three skeevers podcast, but Nolan streams regularly and engages his viewership very well. And those two things make for entertaining um, viewing. And so Max is our guy on that. And uh, the the way I met Max was I was on Steve Rogers out in Cyrodiil testing a build and I wasn't really happy with where the build was. And I was running around with my buddy and we ran into Max and normally guys like Max, I just kind of stay away from the, the tower farmers or the guy that is near a tower and he's poking at people trying to get somebody to come and engage with them. And um, anyways, my buddy and I, we, we got into a, into the fight with Max and we could immediately tell that he was tough. Also a side note that's in ESO right now. And I think we're still dealing with it. Block bug. The block bug's going on, so you can't effectively block. You can't hold block and mitigate 70% of um, a attacks that you know are going to be hitting you. And so um, there are certain classes right now that are having a really fun time because they can just, you know, get their offense off and there's no <laughs> mitigation to it for the most part. But um, anyways, Max, like, just nuked my buddy and <laughs> my buddy's a good player too like we've uh 2vx before uh many times i've got a lot of them on the channel and so he killed my buddy right at the start and i'm just yelling for my buddy to get back in the fight i'm like get back over here get back over here because it's only, it's only going to be a matter of seconds before he nukes me too you know and uh so we ended up having this long fight and um uh after a while i was just like dude i need to get out of this fight like it's only a matter of seconds before he nukes me and i'm just getting lucky like he gets me down to 90 percent, and i'm not blocking anymore i'm just trying to dodge roll and then i started line of siding you know and i'm like i'm just gonna be as annoying as possible and maybe he'll get tired of trying to kill me <laughs> <laughs> because i knew i was never gonna kill him and um he's just too good and my sustain is terrible and i don't have um, I was playing Steve Rogers and I'm sword and board, sword and board. And it's really hard to mount offense on that. And he's a Templar. And so basically our, our class was gutted. And so I was like, I'm just not going to kill him. And so my, I think my buddy gets back in the fight and Max just kills him again. Just like bing, bang, boom. <laughs> and my buddy's so mad right now because he's just super frustrated with the block bug and everything that's going on in the game. And... <laughs> And so then it's like, uh, I think we were fighting for a little bit and then Max kind of backs away and he's like moving left and right, you know, like I could tell okay, for me, I'm like, okay, good. He's finally getting frustrated, you know, <laughs> I'm always getting frustrated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. not trying to, he's not trying to kill me anymore. And, uh, <laughs> and so then I was like, okay, well maybe he's not going to kill me, uh, <laughs> and so my buddy gets back. And my buddy's like, yeah, you know, let's forget about that guy. And I was like, yeah, we're not ever going to kill him. <laughs> and he'll just kill us. And so as we turn around, and Max wasn't like taking pokes at us really or anything. Max goes back to the tower a little bit. And I think actually someone else jumped in and he uh -huh. like just nuked them in a millisecond. We're like, yeah, that's not, <laughs> that's not the guy. We're not going to mess with that guy. <laughs> and, uh, so then we see a two two guys roll up onto the resource where we're at the the tower where we're at that Max was fishing at and so we go and we engage those two guys and they're okay too but we can tell that they're they're not Max's level like they're a different tier level right and so we get into the mix of fighting with them and it and um and it wasn't it wasn't maliciously when I say this, but we're in the mix fighting those. And then it's just bing, bang, boom. And I die. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I look at my death recap and it was like that rotation that Max has. And it just like nuked me to a millis, you know, and I was like, Oh no. 
And so Max was just standing there. They weren't fighting him. And one of the two guys from the 2v2 comes over and starts teabagging me. Like, ha ha, you know. And so I messaged Max. And I was I was like, hey, thanks for tea, not teabagging me, you know. And uh, uh, because there's a lot of tos- toxicity in the game. And he responded with, yeah, that's not my style, you know. And so from that moment on, like, we just started talking and like, I realized, hey, this guy is really cool and, you know, super skilled, really cool. Didn't seem to have this like elitist toxicity to him. Um, And so anyways, here he is. And (laughs) what was the rest of your day like, Max, that day that you were killing people? (laughs) The rest of that day, it was just a typical day out in zero. I mean, (laughs) Nothing really too special. I mean, great fights. I was streaming too at the time, I think. I'm pretty sure. When we started talking, yep. I messaged you uh, when we were going back and forth, and you said, yeah, I'm streaming. And I was like, oh, cool. And so I went over to his channel and jumped in, and that's where I saw like his engagement's cool. His He's not an elitist. Like, um, yeah, you know, this is someone that I could watch and enjoy watching and chatting with you know and he's someone that you can learn from too like while you're while you're watching him play you could ask him a question like hey how do you like setting up your spec bow or because he was playing he's a nightblade main magblade or hybrid what what's tell us about your main um my main my nightblade i've been playing it for many many years i have over like 3200 hours just on nightblade itself but i play every class very well Nightblade is just something that stuck out to me, something that I enjoyed playing, so I just kind of stuck with it. When it comes to mag or stamina, it really does depend on the patch, because there was a few patches where mag, you just you just can't play. It was terrible. Like, you cannot kill anything. And then there's other patches where mag was alright, but I still played stam, because I guess you could say I played stam more with the cloak and shade and that stuff, so I played that. And then I would say... Kind of when uh, Nightblade uh, Brawler builds were kind of starting to come up, I jumped on it because that's I would rather play this type of playstyle rather than the cloaky, shady playstyle. So I jumped on that, and it just it just clicked with me, and it worked, and I started to get really good at it, so therefore I just kind of stuck with it. Yeah. So the cloaky, shady, you know, is hopping in and out of stealth and uh, feels... Uh, I get. I guess stereotypically, everybody attaches gank blade to the cloaky shady type. But exactly. the reality of it is, is even on the dark cloak side, the brawl blade, you you're you still have the crazy burst potential. So you do. You do yeah. still have the crazy burst potential. I think nightblade in general has that. And then yeah. plus with the brawler, you have the lot of survivability, and it's just it just took over the game ever since then. Yeah. Yeah. So when you're streaming, are you out there all the time on your Brawl Blade or are you switching up classes? What how how streaming been going? It's been going really good. A lot of a lot of progress in a very small amount of time. But you, when I'm playing, I usually start off with Nightblade just for a little bit, you know, just kinda play it. And then I'll usually jump to another class. So I'll let chat decide what class I should jump to, whatever one they wanna see. But Usually start off with Nightblade, and then lately I've been doing Sulk and DK, so that's kind of just what I've been putzing on. You doing um, like a hybrid, or are you doing a, a Mag Sork it's, setup? It's it's hybrid. It's 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 hybrid again. I think hybrid has taken over this patch. If you're not running hybrid on most things, you're putting yourself at a dis- disadvantage. And some people complain about that, but why would I put myself at a disadvantage? Doesn't make sense to me. But you can do whatever you feel like you do. So right. I just play hybrid because it's what I enjoy playing. Yeah. And it's just it's a it's a brawler sork, of course. It's nothing nothing too special. I mean I guess it is a little special. I should have a video coming out on it, hopefully in the next couple of days. Nice. So YouTube, you got the YouTube channel made, but we don't have videos yet. By the time this maybe goes live, maybe you'll have something up. Hopefully and- I will. Yeah, that's awesome because there'll be a billboard for you that sends traffic to your Twitch 24-7. So, and that's really cool. And then once you get access to your community tab on YouTube, you can just post there too saying going live and whatever and all your subscribers will get that. And so that'll be cool. Yep. 
And that channel is Nuff, N-U-F underscore X-D, right? Correct. Uh, Twitch and uh, YouTube are both the same. Awesome. Yeah. So that'll work out really well for you. But um, Jason just recently joined ESO. I'm excited about that. I did. I'm, I think, a level four now. I have just a couple hours in. I'm following the main storyline, I think. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, found a couple add-ons, which help a little mini-map. I'm used to the WoW mini-map, so the map guide at the top is different for me, but uh, I'm having a lot of fun. Good, good. What uh, what class did you roll with to start? A warden. I think I, I want to be a healer, so I think that's the right one. Ooh, yeah. Wardens are like OP right now, so yeah. It, you'll have some abilities available to you, like Crystal Slab and stuff like that, or um, some amazing healing capabilities with polar winds and stuff and there are a lot of really really strong healing wardens out there so yeah you're going to be a beast well i'm not a beast i'm a human i thought about being the beast the cat person but i was like that's just too cute yeah yeah well sometimes you got to be the khajiit in the game i i made a, a khajiit nightblade and his name was professional see what i did Ooh. there Oh, I saw that, yeah. Professional, nice. and it was like three R's. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so Max, what are, um, for 2023, I kind of feel like 2022 is a little bit of a rough year, a black eye for ESO. Uh, hopefully 2023 goes better. Um, what are you hoping, like, if you had a wish list for ESO, what are you hoping to see in PvP? What are you hoping to see in the game over the next year or two? I'm hoping to see improvements on uh, performance in the sense of bugs. I need to get that sorted out. Yeah. But it's, and maybe uh, the tox toxicity in PvP right now is one of the highest I've ever seen it at. Very Why do you rare. think it is? I, to be honest, I think I, I don't know. Uh, I mean, people. I I'm gonna take a guess. They just don't like losing, or they don't they don't like something about it. Not necessarily just losing. Yeah, they just think, they don't like something about it, and they resort to toxicity to, I guess I'm not gonna say make themselves feel better, but put them in a position where they feel like they won. I appreciate that you don't engage in that. I mean, from what Grim was saying and everything, it seems like you're taking the high road, and hopefully a lot of our viewers will appreciate that, um, and we can get more people doing that in game. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I've, I've never been to a... share. Do you have a story recently? I have a story I want to share about toxicity, but uh, and uh, do you have a story that you can share that doesn't involve any uh, profanity or anything? <laughs> well, I mean, toxicity in this game involves profanity, but I will not say it or any of that stuff. But I sometimes it's like more of a slight toxicity in the sense of like kind of poking at you trying to get a reaction i guess yeah but sometimes i don't even respond or sometimes i just agree with them if if you agree with them they won't win so therefore you just kind of kind of ignore it but you just try your best i mean i don't really toxicity yeah. in this game i don't think it's it should be what it is what it is in the sense of like where it's at yeah it should definitely be addressed and handled but at the same time it's like people are gonna do what whatever they're gonna do if they really want it that bad they'll find a way around it so i say just ignore it and keep playing the game do what you enjoy yeah i like that i like that a lot i i just say thank you and that and i don't respond if they keep keep at it i'll be like thank you that's all i say yeah you know it's interesting they have this like no teabagging clause but it's if you teabag somebody, you don't get banned for it. I, I think there's a misconception there. But if you teabag someone and then they say stop, they have to tell you yeah. to not do it, and then you do it, you can potentially be banned for that, right? Because that's yeah. called grieving or whatever. Here the funny. Here's the funny thing. Most of the people that are teabaggers, they play in offline mode. Yeah. You can't even talk to them. You can't message them. It'll say that that no account found or that person's offline. So there is no telling them to stop teabagging. <laughs> and so I think they, you know, Zoss needs to rethink their 
teabagging um, protocol. Like most of these people are playing offline mode. So, yeah. How do you play offline mode? So uh, you, you go into your character sheet and you can, there's a little green arrow that normally says you're, you're recognized as playing online. You can just click that and change it to offline or do not disturb. So. so then you're still online engaging in the community, but nobody can talk to you. Yeah, exactly. you can. Yeah, you can. Yep. You can, you can not talk. disturb. Yep. You can talk, but they can't talk to you. Yeah. That's you not disturb. So they can grief, and then you can't. Okay, interesting. And that's what they're doing. They're just playing an offline mode, sending you trash talk, and you can never respond back. <laughs> so, um, you know what I think it is? is I think ESO has... A lot. I think the talent pool is a lot of newer players right now because I would say your intermediate to advanced player base has left the game. A lot of them have. And so it's mostly intermediate to beginner now. And I think these newer players are the ones, it's called casual toxicity. And I think that that's what we'll run into a little bit is the casual toxicity. There's a lot of that. Um, in the game, so. Well, hopefully, some of the content cr content creators can shape that and change the paradigm as these players are seeking out information and they're going to YouTube and they're going to Twitch to learn. If the content creators are staying positive and talking about, hey, let's stay positive, maybe that'll have an influence. Yeah. I, that's what I'm hoping. I'm hoping the content creators not really shame those people, but you know, there is a message out there about toxicity. Like Max was saying, you know, it's a, it feels like it's at an all time high right now or whatever. Like, um, I was in Imperial city down, um, I'm on my new Mace Windu. And so I don't have all my passives or all my anything. And I just hit CP. I do have CP gear on him, but I'm basically build testing and still getting sky shards and stuff because he's not a complete build. And I was down there with, uh, two other people. And one of them I was with, he immediately told me like, Hey, if a fight happens, I'm not going to be able to do much. This is a new build, new everything. And it's just not, you know, it's not where it needs to be to fight right now. I was like, no problem. It's whatever. And the other person is a very, very competent healer. And um, so we're at Molag Ball clearing it, which is a PVE encounter, right? We're PVEing, um, trying to get the skin that drops for Molag Ball. It's a million plus gold skin, but super rare. And um, for... Um, I can't remember if it were... I guess it would have been four DC run into the room and a four of another faction. Cause we're on AD at the time and they come into the room far side and the healer who, who has his head on a swivel. He's real good about this. He sees it and he calls it out. We're not in comms together by the way. And so I, with Mace Windu go and engage immediately and the first two guys that I engage, the frontliners, they run right past me and go to the back two guys. And then the third guy in the group, I nuke him real quick. I kill him very fast. And then I start fighting and I get into a really good fight with the fourth guy. Meanwhile, there's a 2v2 going on back behind us. Um, and the first guy that said, I'm not good in a fight or whatever, um, he's doing the best he can. The two that ran past me realized that the one other guy is a healer. So they both target him. And so he's normally really good, but in that big area, there's nowhere to line or sight. And when you got two heavy hitters, um, he's basically having to face tank the damage and they end up killing him. So then, um, the other guy disengages from me, the fourth guy in the group disengages from me. And I kite for a second to get my resources back and go back in to engage. And all three of them jump on uh, the one guy that's not good in a fight, he says, you know. And um, so they kill him. And and then I engage. I end up killing the one that I engaged, the, the fourth guy. I kill him, and then it's a 2v1 or a 1v2. And 
So we're fighting, and the mechanics, Molag Ball is out, and he has a mechanic where he jumps up in the air and disappears and then cu crushes down on whoever he has aggro on. And I saw him using that mechanic, so I streaked through the Nightblade that was with it. It was a Nightblade and a Warden, and this Warden is running the most meta-broken thing, and the Nightblade was a, a heavy hitter too. Um, and so I streak through the Nightblade, which stuns him, and Molag Ball crushes down and actually kills him so now it's a 1v1 and this warden and i are going back and forth for probably 10 minutes 15 minutes trying to fight and i'm playing i can't stand my ground and try and fight him because he's doing the whole frost staff on the ground and the mobilization stun route basically you would lose control of your character every four and seven seconds um because of the way frost stabs are working right now um and he's just hitting really hard as well and sorcerers typically don't have a very strong healing kit it's not like a night blade um who has healthy offering and all kinds of healing at their disposal and it's not like the other wardens you know it's not like the other classes and so you can wear sorcerers down if they're not playing a hit and run play style for the most part um uh, depending on the build and that was the case for for me um you know he was very taxing and the guy hit very hard he was um he was a good player as well and i tried the tricks to use molog and use stuff against him to see if i could whittle him down or whatever but his healing kit and his sustain he's running around on his sword and board bar the most of the time and and spamming polar wind and his resources, his resource management seemed really, really impressive. So it was a fight. I wasn't really c confident I was going to win, but I was going to keep taking poke pokes and see, see what happens. And my buddies in chat were like, dude, this is as entertaining as can be to watch. Like, <laughs> you know, cause they saw me kill the, you know, the other guy. Then they saw me kill the one guy with Molog and, um, you know, then they're they're watching this, you know, fight and me playing a hit and run and this other guy just Frank at the tank walking me down and healing through everything. And anyways, um, I did a bunny hop, a dodge roll bunny hop, which is kind of a for intermediate to advanced players. It's um, when somebody drops a meteor on you, um, the meteor not only will it do direct damage and hit you very hard, but it'll drop an air AOE patch on the ground underneath you. So what you do is if you dodge roll forward and hop in the air and hold block, you'll 70% damage mitigate the meteor direct damage hit. And because you're traveling forward, your momentum's carrying forward, the patch on the ground won't even hit you. And so I bunny hop forward after a dodge roll, hold block, and I got the block bug. Um, there's a new iteration of the block bug where uh, you can't use any abilities after that. And so... I couldn't bar swap and I couldn't use abilities after that happened. And so then I'm just running from him, this guy. I can't heal. I can't do anything trying to line aside him. And he kills me and he comes over and teabags me immediately. After this like long 10, 15 minute fight, you know, where I, I killed two of his other buddies and he teabags me. And that made me super mad. <laughs> like I wanted to jump on my main uh, and go show him. <laughs> but, and I don't normally get that way, but I, had he not teabagged me, I would have messaged him and said, that was awesome. Thank you for that fight. That was really, really fun. It was crazy, you know, but he had to ruin the moment with that toxicity. And I just, I hate that. I hate that about the players in ESO and that level of toxicity um, and things like that. And I know with Max running around in Cyrodiil and fighting groups and fighting outnumbered and fighting solo, he sees that probably all day, every day. So it takes a special type of player, I have to acknowledge that, to do what you're doing, Max. I've been dealing with it for many, many years. Kind of kind of get used to it after a while. Yeah. So what is your ESO story? Like, I'm I'm new to the game. I come from World of Warcraft. What What is your ESO story? How did you get involved in the game? Uh, I started at a young age. I started playing in uh, beta because my dad actually plays this game. My dad's the one that got me into it. So ever ever since then, I would always sit on my dad's lap because I was probably like six or something like that. So I wasn't 
really old enough to actually play play it and understand the get a grasp of the game and i would just sit on his lap or i would just well he's gone i'll just putz on his character like when he was playing a sork at the time i loved just streaking streaking was just it just fascinated me i don't know why just does so i'd always just run around and streak and pick up materials and i did that for a while and i started killing mobs this is when i grow up and then when I was about seven and a half, eight years old, I actually got my own computer and my own account. So I actually started playing uh, kind of by myself and just kind of doing my own thing, not really caring. And I would say about 11 or 12 is about when I started taking PvP seriously or starting to get good at it and making a name for myself or getting recognized. And it just kind of all started from there. Now being about 17, just being 17 years old and still playing the same game I fell in love with when I was a kid. It's just, it's just amazing. And you're getting recognition for it with your channel and everything. You're engaging your audience. You're, you're not toxic, toxic. You're a great content creator. So that's awesome. I try to be some, some days it, it gets hard, but I know in the, in the long run, it will definitely be the best for myself and everybody who watches and interacts with me. Yeah. So you just got, um, what just happened for you on Twitch? I just got uh, affiliation and I started streaming probably about a month ago and in, in less than a month, I got about 60 followers. I knew that would happen, dude. I knew that would happen. Like when we first started talking, I just knew it. Your level of engagement with your audience and you, like I said, even the the sweaty skilled players they recognize real recognizes real so and they'll okay. see that you're skilled yep congratulations congratulations thank you i appreciate it yeah. it's always been a it's always been a dream of mine of just not exactly being famous or just streaming streaming in general was a dream of mine but people knowing who i was in a game i was playing it meant the world to me and it still means the world to me even if they don't like me just they they know who i am and they know what i stand for and granted people that hate me will also twist it twist the words but people that are real and people that have been there for a while will know the real yeah. the real person i am and it's just something that you just have to look at every day and make sure you create the right uh, background for yourself and how you want people to view you so I've just been kind of going along with that yeah it it's gonna you're just gonna continue to grow i believe that for sure so stick with it um and maybe life because life is like this um your frequency or your repetition or your cadence of streaming might get altered as life happens but if you stick with it i think really good things because like i said you have the skill set to appeal to the high-end performers and you also have the engagement and the um your personality to engage with everyone in between so what's your what's your message like if you had a message you could share with people who haven't seen your channel or that are curious and want to go over and watch um you know we, we've talked about not being toxic and about keep taking the high road like what, yeah what is your message like what's your voice that you want to share or you try to share with your viewership um i would say no matter what exactly happens to whatever happens in your life and whatever you deal with it's you would still have to be nice to people you still have to have a friendship so come into my chat and be like it's been a rough day or something you know we'll sit there and talk about it i mean I may not exactly know who you are, but I I do know just talking of, talking to someone or talking about it, and I'm not exactly knowing your face and knowing who you are. I know it helps. It may not help in the sense of actually like talking to like one of your friends or some, but just knowing that someone's there for you and someone that wants to help you is definitely something big. And I also I I apply that with the high tier gameplay. Or I try to at least. And just overall, just a humble person and somebody that's wanting to help and wanting the best for anybody they fight or interact. I love that. Yeah, that's awesome. 
So let's play. We're going to play a little game here. All right. We're going to test your one VX. Um, we're going to te test your one VX brain. How's that sound? Um, all right. Let's go. For this, it. this is going to be um, a learning process for Jason because he we haven't jumped in with Jason and started coaching and PVP or anything like that. So he'll be able to get some nuggets of information out of this, too. Um, and this is completely unscripted too. Uh, Max had no idea we were going to do this and I didn't even know we were going to do this until two minutes ago. I thought, Hey, here's an opportunity for a learning moment. <laughs> so <laughs> here we go. <laughs> You're out in Cyrodiil. Yep. And we're going to go through each of the different classes. Okay. Yeah. And we'll talk, uh, we'll say your typical, you run into, when you run into this class, you're going to run into the typical play style of it. Okay. okay. As an example, you're on your main and you run into a gank blade. Okay. Yep. And we'll say they're a melee night blade ganker. Yep. How do you ha handle them on your main? Um, how do you dispatch a gank blade night blade on your main? Well, so if I know they're around, if I'm standing still, I will always hold block. And most of the time, if you're holding block, a ganker will look at you and they will just ignore you. But, say, if they don't and they still attack you, it's crucial to dodge roll in the first few seconds. Because in the first few seconds is when the damage will hit you. And so, usually, if you get out of that, you're usually good. You're usually good. You just gotta survive the first few seconds. But right. to say, if you get hit by that, the best thing you can do is LOS and put slight pressure on them. Because most gank blades are squishy. So usually they get hit once or twice, and they'll usually run. So if you can kind of mix both of them in there, you'll be set and you won't die. That's that's awesome. I love that too. And another Ding. thing... Correct answer. Yeah. <laughs> you know, another thing about that holding block right at the beginning is um, it, even if they do decide to jump on you, hopefully if block's working, right? Um, it mm -hmm. mitigates 70% of their, bur um, their burst right at the start. And most night exactly. blades are going to hit you with a heavy attack all right into a spec bow, right? And so mitigating 70% of that damage coming in, that's their rotation, you know? Exactly. And yeah, I love that. And it's a guaranteed crit since they're a sneaky... You know, they're using shadowy disguise, so they're getting that guaranteed crit. So it's very important to mitigate 70% of that damage. What about a mag sork? You run into a mag sork, what are you looking to do against them? And it'll be the typical, like, Malcolm mag sork. They're a shield stacking, haunting curse, crushing shock, or force pulse, crystal gotcha. frag user. Or maybe, we'll say overloader. So, when I run into them, they... They, their damage is pretty high, so you got to be careful. But at the same time, you have to put pressure on them. You have to keep that constant pressure. Even though you may not be touching their health, you're going to run through their mag because they're going to be shield stacking. And there will always be that slight window of where there's no shields. And when you see that window, you have to react very quick, and that's when you have to do your damage. And say if you... If you get that window in, because Sulks are usually pretty squishy, you'll hit them very hard. And you get them in that combo, and you hit that combo when their shields are down, you are very well off. You will win that fight. Yep. I see that so many times. I see people, um, they spend too much time on their back bar when they're under attack by a mag sork, and they're not putting mm -hmm. pressure into the mag sork and making they're... them have to shield stack. Yep. Yeah, you're just, you're just giving them free open, because you, if you're not getting pressured, and it's a 1v1... There's no point into the stacking mag or shields. There's, there's no point because it's just a waste. Granted, a good sork will usually keep up one shield just in case, just one shield. But as soon as you start applying that pressure, that's when they start rolling through their shields. Yeah. Ding, yeah. ding, ding. Correct answer again. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, what about how are you dealing with the um, health stacking, frost staff using... Uh, wardens right now that are running either crystal slab or the uh, other morph that shoots the ice at you, ice slab or whatever. So in them fights, I usually play very defensively, not because they hurt, but I give them that false sense of hope of okay, they're doing something in the sense of putting me on the defensive. And most of the time, this kind of works for anything. Is if you do that, they usually let their buffs down or they get tunnel visioned, and that's when you when you start realizing oh their buffs are going down and they're not reapplying them. That's when you hit them. 
and just being on Nightblade in general, the burst is so high, usually you can kill them if they have 35k plus health. Yeah, yep, yep. E but, no, I'm just kidding. Good job. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I love that. And yeah, so with those guys right now, because they're pretty darn strong, you have to bait them. And maybe yes. you bait them into lull. You're lulling them into complacency, like with buff maintenance and management or healing. They lay off their heels because they get you low and they think, here's my moment to finish him. And okay. instead of keeping my buffs up. Yep. Love it. Okay. What about um, what about a Templar right now? We'll talk about the old school. I say old school, pre update 35 the toppling charge biting jabs um so with with nightblade some abilities like you have an ability called prismatic escape and it reduces the damage done by area effects by 20 percent and biting jab is considered aoe so usually i do as long as you keep that up and keep your hots rolling the odds of them killing you are very, very low. They're not probably not going to kill you. Unless they have like this crazy burst that they somehow pull out of the tree. I, but yeah. Usually they're not gonna kill you. And you and you usually try to do the same thing, let the buffs go down and then hit them. And you could also you good players will always keep the buffs up, usually. So yeah. you can also health bait them. So and Templar is very, very very it's hard to do that because of most of the time they're running Radiant, so it's an execute and it hits very hard. So you can definitely give it a shot and try it and health bait them. So health baiting means you get your health low on purpose, so hopefully they'll go more offensive and try to pressure you more and let their stuff go down, and then you just hit them out of the blue. And they're like, and they kind of, the hope is they stumble for the keys and be like, what, what just happened? Yeah. Yep. What about how do you deal the typical mag uh, mag or stam DK? I guess the hybrid DK that um, we'll say that they're running the fossilized, they're running a whip, and then they're running noxious breath and another dot. How would you deal with one of those guys? So on DKs, it's very important that it doesn't really matter if you put pressure on them or not. You can, I guess, if you want to, you can, but your health is going to deteriorate really, really quick with all them dots and all that stuff. And DKs usually don't run a lot of recovery. They usually use their alt to keep up their resources. So usually you're going to wait for them to alt, because then at that point you know, okay, their resources are full. They have really no other way to get their resources back besides heavy attacking or popping a potion. And then you start putting that pressure on them, make sure, making sure you can try to burn through their resources. And then when they're back on the defensive, that's, that's when you try to hit them and you go for the kill. I love it. Uh, keep make sure you actually have your hots up, of course. Yeah, and how do you deal with uh, if they're using corrosive? Corrosive. So, kind of depends on what how you want to be known for as a fighting a DK. There's two options that you can do when they pop a corrosive. One, you could turn the other way, pick up your dressing room. That's one option. Or two, that's what you I would do. sit there. You can, I I usually just sit there and I heal through all the damage that they usually try to do. I usually heal through it. Yeah. And then after the corrosive, they usually have nothing because they try to burn through all their resources to kill you. And then yet again, that's when you hit them. I love it. All right. So what about, um, so we talked Sorcerer, we talked Nightblade, we talked Templar, we talked Warden. What about a Necromancer? I haven't seen a whole lot of Necromancers as a side ne note. Necromancer and this uh, Necros and this patch are on the low side of being good. So, um, Necros, they're really not that complicated to hit. Usually you can, you, you, Necros, you hit them basically whenever they don't have block up and usually go for the kill. But if it's a good player, you, it's kind of the same thing for every fight. You kind of want to get their resources down and kind of get them on the, okay, I need to start getting, accumulating my resources again. And then again, that's when you hit them. Or if you're confident and you know for sure that you can just kill him or kind of think you can kill him, just just go for it. Dude, I love your answers. The, the best way the best way to learn is dying, actually. So dying is not necessarily a bad thing. Dying is how you learn 
and out of every time you die, there's always something you can take out of it. Every every single time. Yep. Yep. So that's how you would combat the different classes, and I love it. Super on point. Let's talk about in your field experiences. Um, let's say since update 35, okay, so the last yeah. two patches. Um, what are some things that you think are overpowered or overtuned right now that that need a look? Like if devs were to listen to this and you and what are some things that you've experienced that you think need tuning right now? Well, I usually get a lot of backlash for this actually because I've been asked this question before, but I say, Night blades, they're very strong. I will not deny that. They were very strong. Probably maybe a little too strong. But night blades is one of the combos that are the easiest to see coming and the easiest to get out of. So if you can't see that coming or you have a problem with it, you may want to practice a little more. I'm not saying you're bad, but they're one of the easiest things. And it's also it has to accumulate with your ping. Because I do understand that people do run on higher ping. And that's that, I guess that can be a problem for some people. But I run on pretty low ping usually, so I don't really have a, much of a problem with ping. But for the people on high ping, doing the in-cap bows, I can definitely see where that's a problem. And I guess they should they should fix that. But at the same time, it's kind of a horse of piece on how they fix it. So I would definitely say knife blades would something that needs to be fixed. Maybe, Maybe cutting their healing... Or cutting damage or cutting healing, one of them, preferably not both, because at that point it's just going to make the Nightblade go down on the list, and I don't want to see that for anything, any class. But I definitely say Nightblade, and there's a set called Mars Balm that is very, very broken. It When I put it on my Sork, that's actually part of my build, when I put it on my Sork, I was out healing my Nightblade, and I've, I would used to struggle to do that, but it's it's... It's crazy. I'm using Mara, Mara's Balm on Mace Windu. It actually feels yep. really good on a Sorcerer because their lack of, like, the, yep. burst heal, I guess. So, yeah. 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 It's very, but, very nice. Yeah, but you put it on classes that have crazy strong heals, and then it makes them almost immortal. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I guess gank blades. I don't have a problem with, like, a typical gank blade. That has to be up in your face, but them bow blades, the ones that just sit back and just spam snipe, it's it definitely gets a little little annoying, and just them proc sets and that stuff, just so annoying. They you could have a, such a good one bx, and then you get that one one knife blade that's just sitting in the back sniping, and it's over with. Yeah. Have you run into the lightning staff um, empowered heavy attackers um, like on a resource, like while you're clearing uh, guards or anything yet? Um, I have. Wait, the I, I have. I mean, they're annoying, but they're definitely not something that's to be like. It's it's kind of it's it is annoying the heavy attacking, but I don't mean how do I say this? It's all. It's annoying, obviously, but it's not exactly a problem, I guess you could say. Something I just think needs to be, it's not working as intended when they, Correct. so they said that Empower, I have some screenshots, uh, I got hit with a 30k Lightning Staff heavy attack, um, and we've got people in our guild that got hit by 40 and 43k, and it's because the passive the tri stat passive for the destro staff uh specifically lightning staff when you got the two points in it or three points in it it splashes 100 percent of the damage well if you have the buff in power which is only supposed to be pve it's not supposed to be pvp you're they're hitting the npcs with plus 80 percent damage on their heavy attacks and if you're a player character standing near those npcs the damage splashes to you and uh so i was running up to uh, there was a lightning staff heavy attacker at molag ball uh soloing it and i was running up to attack him and i got hit with one of the splash in one shot <laughs> i didn't even get a chance to hit him i got hit by the splash and i was like what the heck yep. <laughs> I got one shot by a lightning staff heavy attack guy, but I could see how that would be problematic in Cyrodiil. You know, if you're 
near the guards or around the keeps and they're utilizing the keeps and the guards but if you catch them open field they're not ever going to kill you so yep. yeah um yeah so empower lightning staff heavy attackers spec bows hitting super hard right now what else can you think that might need to be looked at since you're out there with your boots on every day well be honest, I think that's about it. I mean, there may be other things that I just may not be thinking of right now, or I don't really think is a problem because I deal with it. But a game, in my opinion, a game is supposed to be adjusted to however the game is, right? People adjust, that's what keeps it new, that's what keep, keeps people playing, is change. And some people don't adapt to change very well, or they don't like to change. And it's like, it's it's what you have, and that's what you have to deal with, so you have to make it work if you want to keep playing. And it, and I used to I used to actually be that person of, I don't like it, I'm not playing. But I missed the game, I missed playing it. So I changed, and that's when you just start having fun, and it's like, this is if this is what you have to do to keep up with other people, it's what you have to do, no hard feelings. Yeah. That's good, that's a good message about change, I like that. Yeah. So as a new PVP -er for Jason, what would be some advice that you would give him um, for the journey that he's going to undertake? Journey? Oh, it's a very, very long journey ahead of you. You have a lot to look forward to. But to be the best out of the best, I guess you could say, or get, or just be good in general, you have to I'm, know I'm too old to be the best of the best. Okay, so you got to be, you got to, you, you want to be okay, right? You want to? Want, yeah yeah i want to be yeah. good I yeah, be yeah, good. yeah exactly so the best place the best thing is having knowledge and that knowledge in this case is knowing what every class can do and knowing what every build can do and therefore while what i did because i wanted i wanted to be the best of the best because that's just i just want to be good at it i want to be known i want to i want to make an impact in not just the community but people in general so i played every single class and every single build that was out there and i started learning about what every build does and what every build can do and what every class can do. And that's not exactly something that you have to do, but I felt like for me, it was the best thing I could do. And then just having the understandment, under, understandment of the game is definitely very important. I can relate with that um, from PVE content in World of Warcraft. I went at the tank and I found that I needed to not only know my responsibility and roles yep. in that dance, but I needed to know the healer because I depended upon them to stay alive. And I needed to know the different classes and what they were capable of doing for interrupts or stuns or bursts or whatever. And so it was like, okay, in this process of becoming a tank, I have to learn everything lottie dotty about the dungeon and about all the roles and responsibilities in relation to it. So then that way I can execute and be superior. So I, I can relate to that. Yeah. What class did you play in while? Um, since Lich King, I played a death Knight, and then oh. in Legion, I picked up a demon hunter and oh. then I put it down on uh, shadowlands, picked up the DK again. And then, uh, I, I played pretty heavily for a month when the Dragonflight launched, but I'm, I'm taking a break. Picking up ESO. Hey, I mean, I I play WoW too. I mean, I'm I'm a feral main. I play feral. Me, I've been playing WoW for years as well. Guardian or feral? Ah, uh, feral. Kitty, nice. Yeah, something I, I yet again I fell in love with the fact you could shape shift and become animals in such a young age. You know, I think that's one of the hardest that and the enhancement shaman and yep. maybe the fire mage are some of the hardest rotations to actually execute appropriately. Like maybe yeah. kitty weaving is harder, but to do to do kitty well is skill. Nothing yep. but skill. Exactly. Rogue right now and Dragonflight is they they have so high burst damage, but being sub is it's it's hard. I mean it's you have high damage, but uh put out damage you need cds yeah outlaws in a good place yeah yeah i was i was not happy with the demon hunter and shadowlands but they're they're pretty i mean it's pretty boring it's pretty it's pretty much only one way one style of playing if you want to be exactly. like with the new talents there's a lot it gives a lot of diversification for yep. the majority of classes but there's still some classes where they kind of pigeonhole you yeah yeah they do and I actually, so my family is a gaming family and me and my cousin, he's much older than I am, but me and him grew up together playing games 
And we both played WoW, and we both play ESO. But he got really good at WoW, much better than I could ever imagine. But then I got much better at ESO than him. And so when I jump to his game, he teaches me about it. When I when he jumps to my game, I teach him about it. So it kind of just goes back and forth. And it's, 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 it's so nice just connecting with, like a family in my opinion, it's something that's very strong and something that I value very, very high in my life. Well, that's really what the gaming community is about too. It's exactly. an extension of your family. Exactly. You know, like you're those individuals who come to your channel are in a way a part of your family because you're spending time with them, gaming with them, engaging with them. That's your community. That's yep. who you care about. Like you talked about earlier, the guy who comes online or the girl who comes online and is like, Hey, at a rough day and you legitimately care and ask a question like that's community. That's family. That's what it's about. It is what it's about. It's, it's definitely, it's definitely something that takes part in no matter what you do. And having the support of family, no matter how you, no matter if it's family of a game or family of a IRL family, having that support is definitely a big motivation and a definitely a big thing to keep doing whatever you're doing. Absolutely. Yeah. I like how it, this was maybe last week, Max messaged me on Discord and he said, hey, are you able to jump on? And I like when... It's kind of like the bat symbol in the sky, you know, <laughs> like uh, I wanted to jump on and run and play with them, but I couldn't. ESO was going through a problem with logins, and so I wasn't able to log in and come and run with them. But uh, definitely keep hitting me up whenever, you know, I, I'd love to jump on and run around with you for sure. Uh -huh. Yeah. Any other last remarks or anything you want to add that you didn't have an opportunity to say? Um. Just whatever you do in life, in general, gaming, no matter what it is, as long as you put your mind to it, you'll be successful and put in the work. Isn't that isn't that what your dad told you too when you were talking about streaming? I think that told is, that that is exactly what my dad told me, and he's been telling me that for years. Because there good. for a while, I used to struggle. Like I didn't know what I wanted to do or just have some enjoyment in like, streaming. It's like changed everything, and he's been telling me that since I was a kid. Yes, obviously still I'm a kid, but ever since I was younger, he's always said, whatever you do, or whatever you want to do, you put the work into it, it's, you, you'll succeed. That's Congratulations again on your success. That. Congratulations. I appreciate it. Yeah. That's all I have. No questions for us, Max? Uh, no, I wish you guys the best of luck for whatever you guys want to do. You'll have to teach me some PvP here once I, I get my level up a little bit and my feet a little more wet. You'll have to teach me some PvP. I mean, I mean Grim's might... okay, but come on now. <laughs> we we got to get you a higher level uh, trainer. Higher level of trainer. Yeah. I'm actually about to go live right after this podcast. There this you recording. go. Hey, and be cool. You, Make sure you, you mention in, this. It'll yeah, be... mention MVP Gaming. There you go. Oh, for sure. Anytime. I'll make it a command. Don't worry. <laughs> there you go, a boom command, yes. Exactly, so, exactly. Okay. Well, that's all I had, Jason. Be safe down there. Max, be safe. Uh, everybody yeah, have a good day. Yeah, Thank you. you.